On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared shares with us the best foods and restaurants at the Universal theme parks in Orlando. Welcome to this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer. And today we are on episode number 10 of 11 of our food series, and we are taking you to the Universal Orlando Resort. So we're going to be covering both parks for you today. And the reason we do both parks together in one episode is most people tend to cover both parks in one day. Though that is a big endeavor and they are very large parks, you can definitely do both in one day. And a lot of people do want to do both to try to do the Hogwarts Express to go between the parks and to experience both of the Harry Potter world. So we want to cover both parks today on our food episode to tell you guys about the best things to eat at the park. And by all means, if you're going to spend more than one day at the park, we are going to be covering a lot of different food items that are available at each of the parks. So that way you can still try a lot of these and get a chance to really enjoy the foods that we enjoy when we head over to the Universal Resort. But we are going to be covering both parks for you today. Couple disclaimers to get things going right out of the gates. We are not going to be covering the hamburgers, the hot dogs, uh, the pizza, the chicken nuggets, the things that the little kids are going to eat. We tend to go for things that the teens and the adults are going to want to try and do something a little bit more unique, a little bit different. As we go through our restaurants, we're going to be talking about not only the price and the food, uh, but also the atmosphere, because that does play a role into it as well. Our second disclosure is we can't eat everything. Though we go to Universal a lot, and the reason we go to Universal so much is our season passes allow us to go any day of the year. So on the weekends where our Pixie Pass doesn't work at Disney, we usually head up to Universal when we're out in Orlando. We are not able to eat every single food item in the park. And as a matter of fact, on our most recent trip back in October, uh, we had the pleasure of trying a new restaurant that we hadn't tried before and really enjoyed it. But it is pizza. So we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Uh, that was over in the Marvel Island over there with the Fantastic Four and their pizza place. And it was actually really good. We really enjoyed it a lot. But again, like I said, we're not going to try to cover that today. We do want to encourage you, pause this podcast wherever you're listening to us or if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and click that pause button and then go down and click the subscribe button. That way uh, you are able to get our content delivered to you each week when we deliver these episodes and drop them live for you. And we do want to thank all of our subscribers out there. You are why we do this podcast, and you are the reason we keep doing this podcast. We would also ask if there are any tips or tricks that we talk about that save you money in the parks, support us over at Patreon. In our podcast description or on the YouTube description, we do have a link to our Patreon page, and there are multiple levels of support that you can support us there at. We do have a free Butterbeer episode once you become a supporter and a free how to go to Disney for almost free episode once you become a supporter over at Patreon. And that is something we've done actually twice and saved a ton of money. And if you haven't tried our Butterbeer recipe, I can tell you, you will not find another one out on the internet that is as good or as close to the ones at Universal than what we have done. We have spent a lot of time and a lot of hours really playing with this recipe to get it dead on to what you can get at Universal. So this is as close as it's going to get uh, for a home drink there. So you definitely want to try that out. So support us over at Patreon. And by doing so, you're going to get access to those episodes, as well as any future episodes we drop to our subscribers over there, give, giving them early access. So a lot of cool things going on as we go through this food episode today. If there is any food items that you have found in the park that you thought, hey, they should have covered that. That was a great one. Chances are is we haven't tried it. So find us over at Facebook at A Dryer Dose of Disney and send us a message and say, hey, this food item was really good and you guys need to try it. And we will make a commitment that on our next visit out, we will try that food item. And then when we do our updates to these episodes, we will be sure to include that food item and let our public know who contributed that and why we tried it and what we thought about it and the whole nine yards. Definitely, you want to engage with us over on Facebook. We are always talking to our supporters over there. It's a really great place to be. So with that, we're going to dive into this and we are going to start with the top five restaurants at the Universal Resort. Now, I am going to say, like we said at the beginning, this is episode number 10 of 11. Episode number 11 is going to be City Walk at Universal. So we are not going to cover any City Walk today. This episode is exclusive to just the parks. So Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure are what we are covering today. 
So the top five restaurants starting at number five is over at Islands of Adventure. And this is Thunder Falls Terrace. And this is in the Jurassic Park part of the park. And I'm actually even going to give you a special tip on this one. But this is a really great place to go. If you like barbecue, if you like ribs, chicken, they also do have the hamburgers and hot dogs. There isn't a ton of seating within this restaurant. So do be warned about that, that when you go in, I would definitely send somebody back to go find seating while somebody else is doing the ordering. But the food is really good there. It is something we've enjoyed. And in fact, we've gotten stuck there in a rainstorm before. And it was really relaxing to sit there up against the big glass bay windows in the back, looking over the rest of the park while the rain came down. And it is right above the Velocicoaster. And so you could see the Velocicoaster as well as the water and then the Hulk roller coaster across the water. And you could tell when things were running again, obviously, because the coasters would start going. It was a really cool restaurant. We had a really good time there. The food is really good. Your price point is high teens, low 20s, depending on what you're ordering over there. And they didn't do a lot of theming in this restaurant. So know that you're not going to see a lot of cool dinosaur effects up there, but the food is really good and totally worth it. Now, the secret to the uh, terrace over there, the Thunder Falls Terrace, is it is a really good spot to cut through the park, meaning if you are trying to get between the Velocicoaster and over to the Jurassic Park River Adventure, this is going to be your quickest way to go through the building and go up and down the stairs. So if you're Velocicoaster, you'll go up the stairs to get to the River Journey. If you're at River Journey, you'll go down the stairs to get to Velocicoaster versus walking all the way around. So we use this shortcut all the time. It's going to make your life a lot quicker, a lot easier. Of course, then downstairs, there's a shop. There's a kid area with some dinosaur interaction stuff down there and a place where people can sit and wait inside the air conditioning if they don't want to ride Velocicoaster, which is what my wife does. Thunder Falls Terrace is a great place. We really enjoy it. As you know, I love barbecue, so I'm always going to pick this place. But it is only number five on our list because we do believe that there are better places to eat over at Universal. Number four on my list, is actually, I'm going to cheat a couple times on this one, but this one is over in Springfield, USA. So this is in Universal Studios on that side of the park, and it's over in the Simpsons land in Springfield, and they have Fast Food Boulevard. And the reason this is cheating is there are multiple locations within there, but that's why we love it. You can go in there and you can try the Krusty Burger. You can get uh, Cletus's Chicken Shack. You can get a lot of different foods. Everybody has a choice in a selection that you can pick something different and then you can all sit down and eat together because it's designed like a food court. So we really love it over there. The food is actually really good. The theming, if you love Simpsons, it is very obviously Simpsons themed. Everything inside the restaurant is very cartoony. They do have the Simpsons cartoons playing up on large TVs around the different uh, seating areas in there. So it is very interactive. It's a very fun place to go. Of course, all the food items are named after things in the Simpsons. And the food items are great between the burgers and the chicken and waffles and the whole nine yards over there. Now, your price point is going to be a little bit lower over at the Fast Food Boulevard, so that definitely helps. And that coupled with the fact that everyone can choose something that they like is why this made number four on our list, because there's a lot of selection over there. And not to mention, you have some things right outside of there, including Bumble Man's food truck. You've got Lard Lad's Donuts. You've got a lot of food right in this general area that everyone can pick from. And then they even have Moe's. So if you like alcohol, they have Flaming Moe's. They've got all different kinds of drinks over there. So it's a really fun place to go and a really cool place to be. So that's why Fast Food Boulevard made our list at number four. Number three on our list is also at Universal Studios Orlando. And that is Finnegan's, which is an Irish pub. And this is over on the other side of the water over towards the Transformers ride. And with the Irish pub, they've got very unique food there. So if you've never been to an Irish pub, I definitely encourage you to try Finnegan's just because they've got some really great food in there. And it's probably something you're not going to have at home very often. So Finnegan's is great. My recommendation is the shepherd's pie. It, it is a beef and potato type of meal where they layer it together. And it's just great. It, it tastes phenomenal. So Finnegan's is a great place to go. It is totally unique. It's got that Irish pub atmosphere. Of course, they've got some great drinks in there as well. And the price point is in that high teens area as well. So it's not going to break the bank, but they've got some really great food over there. So we definitely encourage you to check out Finnegan's. Number two on our list is actually another tie. And that's because these two restaurants are almost identical, but they are in different parks. So one is over at Universal Studios Florida, and the other one is over at Islands of Adventure. And that is the Three Broomsticks and the Leaky Cauldron. 
So between these are obviously your Harry Potter themed restaurants. They have very similar foods between the two of them. The food is actually really good. They've got the chicken and the ribs and all the other things. And actually one of the top food items in the park is found at these restaurants here. And you can also get your butter beer when you're over there. But the theming is phenomenal. When you go in, it is very much like you see in the movies. It is an old type of shack that is all built out with wood. And then they have all the helpers that are working in there dressed in their witches uniforms. And they've got their hats on and, and all that fun stuff. And there's brooms around and stuff. So the three broomsticks and the leaky cauldron. If you're a Harry Potter fan, you definitely want to go there. The food, again, is great. Because of that, the meals are a little bit larger. They have a little bit more food on each of the plates, and they're a little bit more expensive. They are in the mid-20s over there, so keep that in mind. Now, when you compare it to Disney, you don't have any $70 restaurants like you do at Disney. So it's going to be less expensive at Universal to begin with. And the three broomsticks and Leaky Cauldron are right on par with your middle-tier restaurants that you'd have over at Disney. We definitely love them. We have stopped into both. I do love the apple pie over there. I love the ribs over there. And you definitely want to try those things out. If you've never had a hot butter beer, we'll talk about butter beer here in a little bit. But if you've never had a hot one, they are usually only available in the restaurants. So that's a great place to go. Now in Orlando, it doesn't get very cold outside unless you are there during the winter months. And so it may not be intuitive to think I want a hot butter beer. But trust me when I say that is the best of the three. You have the hot, you have the plain liquid and the frozen. We love the frozen. That's always been our favorite until we had the hot one. And then we said uh, the hot one's just better. But we definitely go with the frozen one on the hot days out there. So the three broomsticks and the leaky cauldron, you can't go wrong when you try those out. The food's great. It's a great atmosphere. It's a fun overall experience. So go try those out. Our number one restaurant, ironically, is the number one winning restaurant like worldwide for theme park restaurants. And they have a huge banner out front that talks about that. And that is Mythos. And this is on the Lost Continent at Islands of Adventure. And the restaurant is very nice. The food is phenomenal. And that's what makes it win. Now, when you go in there, because it's the Lost Continent, there's not a lot of really cool theming unless you're really familiar with Lannis and all the Greek gods. Now, when you're in there, you're not going to see a lot of that. You see some statues outside, but it's set like inside of a cave, which is really cool. So some of the booths are in these little enclaves off to the side where they're like in these little holes within the cave, which is awesome. But the food is why you want to go to Mythos. So it is a Greek-based restaurant. If you love Euros, which I love Euros, and you can get a lamb and all those kind of cool things there, they've got some really great things on their menu. The hummus is great. The meats are all really good. I've heard the salads are awesome. And as you can tell, if you're watching me on video, I don't eat a lot of salad, but I've heard those are really good. The desserts are awesome as well. So Mythos is a really great restaurant at uh, Universal Islands of Adventure. Again, it is award winning. It's won tons of different awards and distinctions, not only nationally, but worldwide for being, like I said, the top restaurant at a theme park uh, worldwide. But Mythos is a really great time. Now, to get a reservation at Mythos is very different than what you would do at Disney. So at Disney, you have the My Disney Experience app and you can go through and select and set a reservation. For Mythos, you actually need to call. So we recommend uh, you go in and on the app, it'll tell you the phone number. Uh, calling is the easiest way to get a reservation. They do fill up pretty quick, but we have found that we've been able to get a reservation at Mythos if we're at least two weeks out. We definitely recommend try to call over to Mythos. And if you can't get a reservation, don't sweat it. When you go, you can go check in and do standby. Now your wait is usually going to be about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. But if you do stand by, uh, you can probably go ride another ride and come back during that period of time. Now, the sad thing about where Mythos is located is there's not a lot of great rides really close by with the exception of Seuss Land. Now with Seuss Land, those waits are always going to be very short. So if you have little kids, you can go knock those out while you're waiting. But Mythos is a really great restaurant. There's a lot of cool shopping around there. So we definitely recommend it. Now I will say, the sad thing uh, that I found out when putting together this list was my favorite restaurant is now closed at Universal and it was located at Universal Studios and it was the Monsters Cafe. If you had never been to the Monsters Cafe, you missed out and I apologize to you that you've missed it because it's now gone. But the Monsters Cafe was built around the classic Universal Monsters, meaning Frankenstein, the Wolfman, the Creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula. And if you go in there, they had really cool monster theming around and it wasn't scary. So, you know, this wasn't going to frighten little kids. 
but they had theming with some statues and some costumes and stuff from the old classic movies. They had a huge variety of food. So they had every type of food that you could find in the parks there. And the seating was massive and it's all indoors. So it was great air conditioning. It was nice and cool in there. Lots of places to sit. And then they were playing the classic black and white monster movies up on the TV. So I was really sad to see this go. The last couple of times we've been to Universal, it was under construction, meaning they had the big barricades up around it and they were working in there. We didn't know what was going on. I did some research and found out that they have actually closed this restaurant permanently and they're putting something else up in its place. So I'm very sad to see the Monsters Cafe go. It would have made this list without a doubt, but it is gone. So I'm not going to use it on the list. Just a little bit of nostalgia there. One of my favorite places to go. Let's go now into the top five food items in the park. So if you're looking for an individual meal or something that's going to be really good, these are the ones you're going to want to hone in on. Starting at number five is the Carnegie Platter. And this is over at the Today Cafe, which is at Universal Studios. The Today Show has their own cafe. It's very close to the entrance when you walk in. It's kind of catty corner from the Despicable Me Minions Mayhem ride. So it's on the opposite corner there. And when you go in, they've got Actually, a lot of really great foods in there, but my personal favorite is the Carnegie Platter, which is a pastrami sandwich. And we are talking, this is a New York style pastrami sandwich where it's as thick as my head. It's loaded with meat and it is really good. So if you like a pastrami sandwich, you definitely want to stop into the Today Cafe. If you have never had a pastrami sandwich, I definitely recommend trying it out at least once. It is really good. It's got a lot of great flavor to it. It's very savory, and the Carnegie platter will not disappoint you over at the Today Cafe. Number four on our list is also at Universal Studios Orlando, and this is back at the Fast Food Boulevard in Springfield, USA, in the Simpsons land. And this is at Cletus's Chicken Shack, and it is the chicken and waffle sandwich. If you have never had chicken and waffles, it combines savory and sweet together in one meal. And it is phenomenal. The chicken is seasoned very well. The waffle is great as a sandwich bun, but you can also put maple syrup on it. So you get that sweet piece to it. And chicken and waffles, just in my book, is one of the best breakfast brunch type meals that's out there. And in fact, in Denver, we've got a restaurant that I love going to that has it. And uh, we order that very frequently over there. So chicken and waffles, though, at Cletus's Chicken Shack is great. So if you like that type of food, you definitely want to stop in there and try that out. It is a full meal. It will fill you up, but it is definitely worth it. Number three is actually right outside the doors there, also in Springfield, USA, Universal Studios Orlando, and that is at Bumble Man's truck. So Bumble Man is a character on The Simpsons, and he's got a food truck out front that's a taco food truck, and he has Korean beef tacos. And these tacos are awesome. And the best part is when you order the Korean beef tacos, you could share these with other people in your family and they are not going to fill you up. But you're going to get some great flavor and you're going to get a chance to experience one of the best food items in the parks. So we definitely encourage you when you're in Springfield, going by Bumble Man's truck, stop for the Korean beef tacos. You're not going to regret it. You're going to absolutely love them. And again, they're street tacos. So they're really small and they're not going to fill you up and they're great to share. Number two on our list, and in fact, we had them for the very first time on our last trip to uh, Universal, and we got these at Islands of Adventure over in the Three Broomsticks, and that is the beef pasties. And when you think about beef pasties, this is something that is not common in the United States. You're not going to hear a lot about pasties, but basically what it is, it's like a beef hot pocket, and they are crispy on the outside, they're very flaky but filled with great beef and great flavor on the inside. And my wife ordered them and we said, yeah, we'll try them out. And actually they were one of the best food items we've had over at the Three Broomsticks. So I definitely recommend when you go to the Three Broomsticks, if you're not in the mood for the rotisserie chicken or the ribs, which are my favorite, then I would say definitely go for the beef pasties because those are very good as well. Of course, I said earlier, you want to try the apple pie. You want to get the hot butter beer. Those are all great things over there as well. But the beef pasties definitely made this list as a top food item because they were so good. In fact, the rotisserie chicken and the ribs didn't. And I've had covered those on other episodes. The beef pasties actually were probably a little bit better. So that's why they made the list for the Universal Orlando Resort. Number one on our list is kind of an odd item, but let me tell you, it is very good. And this is going to be found over at Islands of Adventure in Seuss Land at the Green Eggs and Ham Cafe. And they actually have green eggs and ham tots. 
And these tots are so good. So they are tater tots covered with green eggs. And by green eggs, they are scrambled eggs that are uh, dyed and have some things in them to make them look green. They have ham on top and then they're covered with a white cheddar sauce. So though that may sound like a kind of unique dish, maybe something you wouldn't think about ordering, let me tell you that they are very good. The eggs taste like normal eggs. They don't taste funny because they're green, but it's ham and eggs with tots with white cheddar on top. So you can't go wrong. And if you're not in the mood for green eggs and ham, they have some other tot specialties at the Green Eggs and Ham Cafe. When you go through Seuss Land, you'll find Seuss Land is probably one of those places in the park that is more geared towards kids, obviously. So when you're going through there and your kids want to go ride one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, or they're going to ride the Seuss carousel, or they're going to do the cat in the hat, that's a great time. Go over and get yourself some green eggs and ham or one of the other top dishes, and then share those with your family so that everybody can enjoy them. But trust me, this is the number one food item in both parks. So you definitely want to go try it out. Last on my list here, we're going to go now to the top five snacks in the park. And this list is very close to the list I made for Universal in Hollywood. And obviously that makes sense. They have a lot of the same foods and a lot of the same restaurants. But let's go through what the top five snacks are that you want to try. So starting at number five is one that is more for the size of the item. And that's going to be over at Universal Studios in Springfield, USA. And that is the Big Pink Donut over at Lard Lads. And this donut is larger than the side of my head. In fact, if you know me and follow me on Facebook, my Facebook profile picture is me holding one of these donuts next to my head so that you can see it's larger than my head. And it's a very good donut. It's a large donut. It tastes like most of the other donuts uh, that you're going to get at any other donut shop. But it is really cool just for the size of it. Now, of course, when we get it and we open up the box, we are going to cut it all up and we are going to share it with everybody in our group so everybody gets a chance to try it. It, it's a good donut. It's nothing to write home about other than the fact of the size. It's just really large. Now, over at Lard Lads, they also have other donut types, which are really great to eat. My personal favorite is the apple fritter. That one's really good. But they also have a donut ice cream sandwiches. So try those out if you have a sweet tooth and you want something like that. Lard Lad Donut is a great place to start. Now, again, it's number five on our list, meaning we've got four other items above it that we prefer for snacks over at the parks, but it's not a bad place to start. Number four is over at Diagon Alley, so also at Universal Studios, and that is Florian's Ice Cream Parlor. So this is in the Harry Potter world, and they have all different kinds of ice cream over there. And of course, in Orlando during the hot summer, ice cream is a great treat to have to help cool you off. And they have everything from butterbeer ice cream to some really unique flavors. And the ice cream over there is really good. It's very sweet. It is soft serve, so it is going to melt pretty quick. So keep that in mind. You definitely want to go after it as soon as you get it, especially if it's in the summer. Otherwise, it's going to melt. And if you have it in a cone, it's going to wind up in the bottom of your cone dripping everywhere. So we encourage you, share it, get a couple spoons, and then have at it as soon as you get that ice cream. But it is great over there at Florian. So you want to try that out. Our number three item is also at Universal Studios. So ironically, when you listen to this whole list, there's quite a bit of it is at Universal Studios as opposed to Islands of Adventure. So keep that in mind. But our number three item is at Universal Studios. And this is halfway between the Bourne Stuntacular, which is an awesome show. So I encourage you to check that out if you haven't seen it yet. And the E.T. ride. And as you're walking between the two, you're about to go up over a, a little raised bridge area. And there is a crepe stand there. And the crepes at that stand are phenomenal. Now, they come served to you almost like a waffle cone full of ice cream and sweet treats. But it's a crepe. So it's going to be more flimsy and you can cut it all up, get it on a plate and share it between multiple people. But they do serve it to you like an ice cream cone. So know that it is probably better when you first get it to take a spoon and take a couple scoops off the top, share those, eat those with your group and then get it onto a plate before you cut it all up. Otherwise, it's going to make a huge mess. But they have some great crepes over there. We absolutely love them. And what we will do is if we see there is a showtime coming up for the Born Stuntacular and it's too far out. So let's say it's maybe about 45 minutes out. We will walk over. We will go get a crepe. And then we will head towards the Bourne show and sit at one of the tables there along the street, waiting for them to open that up so that people can go into the queue. And we'll enjoy that together. And it's a great time. And the crepes are awesome. So you just can't go wrong with them. Number two on our list can be found at both parks. And it is the cauldron cake. And if you have not seen this, it is a cake 
that is shaped like a black cauldron with some fire coming out of the top. But it is like a chocolate lava cake with uh, filling on the inside. And it is to die for. It is absolutely one of the best foods and one of the best treats in the in the entire park. So I definitely encourage you, go visit Harry Potter Land, ask around, find out where the cauldron cakes are. And they're usually in the sweet shops or in the bakeries over there. And go get yourself a cauldron cake. The whole thing is consumable. You're going to absolutely love it. It's great to take a picture with because it looks so awesome. So you definitely want to get that Instagram photo done before you take a bite of it. But the cauldron cake is so good. Everybody in your party is probably going to want their own. So keep that in mind. They can be shared. They, they are pretty good size, but I will say that they're so good. Everyone's going to want their own. Which brings me to the number one treat in the park, and that is butterbeer. If you've never had butterbeer, I will say hands down between all the parks, Disney and Universal, this is by far the best drink in all the parks. Now, again, I said a little bit earlier, we do like the hot one when we go into the restaurant, especially if it's cold outside. You can't get that at the stand. So if you're going to the butterbeer stand, you definitely want to get the frozen one, especially if it's hot outside. But that frozen butterbeer is awesome. Now, they can be shared. To drink an entire one is a lot of sugar, and it's probably going to give you a brain freeze, especially out in that intense heat. So we do recommend sharing them, but the butter beers are awesome. They are by far, like I said, the best drink out there in Orlando, and they are the best thing in the park. So you're going to want more than one during the day. And the best part is they have them at both parks, at multiple stands, at multiple places. Usually the lines aren't too bad. I will recommend if you are over in Diagon Alley at Universal Studios, in the back corner, they've actually got a stand back there. You'll notice it's got a big barrel out there and there's some seating out there that does just butter beer. So it's very quick and easy to go over there and get one versus waiting for one at the red carts over at Islands of Adventure because that usually gets backed up. So with that, those are the best foods, the best restaurants, and the best snacks at the Universal Parks. For this week's I Can Do This All Day tip of the day, I'm actually going to tell you the tip is you're going to want to subscribe to us on Patreon. And the reason is you're going to get access to that butterbeer episode. And we have really nailed this recipe. So like I said, that's the best drink in the entire park. You can have it at home whenever you want. If you subscribe to us over at Patreon, you're going to get access to that episode with that recipe. And I'm going to walk you through how we make it and why it's so good. And I can tell you, we have served this to over 30 or 40 different people at this point in time. And every single one of them has said it's the best drink they've ever had in their life. And most of our friends have been to Universal and had the drink, and they all come back and say, ours is just as good as the one at Universal, if not a little bit better. And the reason they say that is it's a tad bit sweeter because I add a little bit more sugar to the drink. We would say our tip of the day, go subscribe to us over at Patreon. You can find the link down in the podcast notes or on the YouTube notes, and you're going to get access to that episode as well as how to go to Disney for almost free. So it's going to save you a ton of money. You're going to be able to get your family out to Disney and to the Universal Parks and enjoy yourselves. And so it's a great tip. With that, we hope you have a magical week and look forward to planning your next vacation out there to Disney World and Universal. And we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.